You're listening to Dirty Feet, a podcast from No More Radio. Vous écoutez le podcast Dirty Feet sur les ondes de No More Radio. Hosted by, animé par, Alison Burns, J.D. Papillon, et Stéphanie Morin-Robert. Stay tuned. We're going to move you. Last week we started our coverage of the 2014 Montreal Fringe Festival and this week we're going to continue. Uh, this time we have the dance companies who are presenting work at the festival here uh, in the outdoor park at the beautiful fringe site that's at Rachel and Saint Laurent. Uh, it's early morning so we've got this place to ourselves and uh, we've just got a pile of dancers here uh, nerding out on uh, dance styles and people and it's a, it's a good time. So we're going to we're going to get into like a, a more of a conversation with everybody here about dance at the fringe and dance in general. But uh, of course, we should start by introducing this beautiful group of people. Uh, I'm going to start to my right. We have Jen Doan, who's uh, we've had on the show before to speak about the project, actually, that she's presenting at the festival. It's called Iridea and it's from the company Woo Me Myth. And it's something that you've been working on with Ted Strauss, who is the artistic director of the company. Jen, yourself, you are the choreographer of the show. So uh, we've heard a lot about the show in the past, but uh, welcome back, Jen. Hi, it's nice to be back. <laughs> <laughs> cool, and I guess we'll get in later to, uh, to what it's like to present your show at the Fringe. You, you presented it at um, Access Asie recently, and you've had a cast change since then, correct? Yep. We, um, Maxine Sigalowitz was one of the dancers, and she is now at a dance festival, so Melina Stinson has replaced her. Cool. Yeah. And then next to Jen's right, we have uh, Pascal Jensen, who's uh, another Concordia graduate, and uh, she's presenting a work actually last minute. You were a recent addition to the festival, so you kind of had to boogie and get your stuff together, hey? Yes, we definitely did. We got uh, a call about a month and a half ago asking if we would like to take the place of a company that uh, dropped out. And we put it all together last minute. And so your your show is called Frag or Sneak It Up Your Sleeve. Or rather, that's two works, eh? It's Frag slash Sneak It Up okay. Your Sleeve. Yeah, it is two works. It's a double bill, so it's a short dance film, and then it's also a contemporary performance. And if you're looking it up by the company name, it's actually Pascal Jensen Projects. That's correct. Super. And then moving on, we've got Helen Simard and Travis Knights. And you two are representing the insane dance double feature uh, by the company Still Milking the New Sacred Cow. Now, we've seen this company before presenting, and, and with you guys involved as well, presenting the Body Slam show. I think two years in a row, Still Milking the New Sacred Cow brought that that show around, which was like a mishmash of, of lots of different art forms. There was speech storytelling, uh, music, dance, and you've done it all over the place, but uh, also at the Fringe Festival. Now, this work is a double bill. 
Uh, Helen, you're doing no fun. And again, we've spoken to you before about no fun on the podcast, but welcome back. Thank you very much for having me again. It's always lots of fun to be here. Aww. And Travis, uh, you are representing the second half of the double bill, which is yes. uh, Breaking Boundaries. Mm, breaking Boundaries. It's uh, quite an insane uh, dance show. Uh, pleasure to be a part of. I've never done something like this before. I'm a tap dancer. Um, uh, so I'm not really in the dance world per se. One thing I do want to make note of is, um, you know, this is a round table outside full of full of dancers and I'm noticing that like, people's postures aren't particularly impressive uh, <laughs> you, you know you, you would think but anyways uh, the, the show is incredible and uh, the artists that we're working with are, are stellar and out of the world I think we're going to have straight backs for the rest of the conversation <laughs> yeah, yeah, really awkward. thanks Travis <laughs> thanks a lot alright and then the next pair of guests we have are representing Quicksilver Dance all the way from Boston you guys are presenting Tempest in a Teacup yeah, that's right. Uh, thanks for having us here. I'm Hans Sergunderknecht. I'm the technical director of Quicksilver Dance, and with me is... I'm Nikki Seo Pedro welch one of the company members. Cool, and I had the pleasure of seeing your show the other night. Lots of fun. And it's a, it's a collection of, of shorter works, kind of group pieces and solos. Yeah, that's right. There's five pieces in the concert. Uh, four of them are choreographed by our artistic director, Mariah Steele, who uh, unfortunately couldn't be here for the whole festival. Um, she's in an MFA program right now. Um, yeah, so four are by her and one is choreographed by me. Um, three solos and two uh, larger group pieces. Uh, just on the top of the podcast, we were actually listening to a piece of music from Tempest in Antique. Hans, can you let us know what it is that, uh, who the composer was and what we're listening to? So our composer is Ryan Edwards, a composer from Boston, a local composer. He worked with us on two of the pieces, actually, in the show. Uh, and it's, he developed the music uh, while we were developing the dance. Great. Uh, so it's all an integrated whole. Great. Thanks for being here. And then next we have uh, Heather Lynn McDonald, and her company is Travail Rouge, which uh, you can you can put in place because you realize that she's got these brilliant red hair. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <Not> natural. <laughs> <laughs> Just to you know finish the mystery, it's not natural. <laughs> and uh, you're presenting the work Garden of Knives. And again, this is a double bill uh, in which you perform the first piece that's choreographed by the lovely, amazing Jasmine Inns. And it's just so much fun to perform. One of the most fun solos I've ever done, for sure. And then that's followed by a piece that you have choreographed yourself, a mm -hmm. quartet. Yeah, and that's Running for Home. And it's one that I have... It's actually two parts that I finally got a chance to put together that I've uh, both have been performed before in Bush DC, in Ottawa, Dances by Youth for Youth, and it's finally come together in its final big form, and it's a very personal, exciting piece for me. Yeah. And once again, we, you're a return guest, because you were actually on the podcast a couple of years ago when you presented the work at Bush DC, mm -hmm. and you came on to talk about your experience with that. And it's, it's, it's fun for me personally to be able to see that work in the context of a more developed, longer kind of creation. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. yeah, it was definitely a beginning nugget when I did it for Bushy C, and it's been really fun to dig deeper into the story that's in that piece because it's definitely uh, uh, has a really strong narrative and lots of lots and lots of props to work with, which is it's really fun. Hey, maintenant, c'est Chloe Bourdage au roi. Uh, ton pièce est deux fois passera. And again, this is a double bill with uh, Elise Landry, and uh, your your piece. Uh, let's tell us tell us a little bit about your piece. I don't know much about it and about yourself. Oh, um, well, like you said, the Frappasera is a double bill, and there's the work of Elise Landry, um, in Histoire de rien du tout, which is um, a, a piece with four characters, half human, half animal, and I think she created it while thinking about the kids and what and how they would react to it so it was really fun and uh, my piece is uh, Il ne suffit pas de vivre which I could translate by living is not enough and it's seven women who just um, had a difficult time in their life and they're trying to get it back up so it's mostly about that and of course next up is uh, JD Papillon our wonderful co-host here under the hi court. I don't have much to say yet because <laughs> I'm not presenting works, but hi. <laughs> cool. So it's a good group. Thanks for being here. Let's get into the, the meat of it. 
So here we are on this beautiful sunny day in the Montreal Fringe Park, uh, and we're celebrating dance at the Fringe. Let's talk about why Fringe. I mean, uh, this is a question we ask a lot. This is a question I have my own personal uh, answers to since I've done the Fringe over and over and over again. I just can't get enough of it. But uh, and, if, and you know, we have some some return companies. Wumi Myth also did the Fringe in the past. So did. Uh, uh, still milking the new sacred cow. Travai Ruse is your first time. Same with Chloe and our Boston group. So uh, just jump right on in here. Why fringe? Pascal Jensen, why not fringe? <laughs> <laughs> Very elaborate. <laughs> is it something that you, you, you just apply to every opportunity that you can get your hands on and that, that pick of the hat kind of situation? Um, no, I aimed to do Fringe last year. I was a part of uh, two shows, and I never, I've never, i never had my own show in the Fringe. And uh, I fell in love with the Fringe last year while being part of it, and I knew that I wanted to do something this year. And um, I finished my film right around uh, the time when it was, when Fringe would happen, so I applied back in January. This is Helen Smart. Um, I really like the Fringe. I've been doing Fringes since 2002 at this point. I've done four Canadian Fringe tours and I just think it's a great opportunity as a dance artist to reach out to a different audience, especially in Montreal. We're often performing for the same 10 people over and over and over again, it feels like. And so it's nice to bring what you're doing to a different audience. Theater audiences see things really differently. And just reaching out and trying to broaden the audience for dance, I think, to me, is a super important part of participating in a festival like this. For Hans and Nikki, I've had the opportunity to see uh, dance from the States, as we were saying before the, the show started, and, at the Fringe Festival. And it seems to be uh, a really nice way to kind of get, get, a, get an idea of what else is happening in the States in terms of dance. Um, what made you pick Montreal and to apply here? Yeah, well, I think for us the question, this is Hans, uh, I think the question wasn't so much why Fringe as why Montreal. Mm -hmm. And um, Nikki and Mariah came up here, when was that, Nikki? We actually came up here last June um, just to, to see what was going on here in the dance scene, to take classes. And instead of taking the, you know, four and a half hour drive to New York, we decided to make it a five hour drive to Montreal. <laughs> and, you know, having international having an international experience so close you know I then asked myself why have I not been here sooner um, so I think as a company member and as part of the company you know to be able to perform internationally and be a part of a festival that's a week long you can meet other dancers you can see other work and being in a I guess a city that's so supportive of the arts is a really is, I think, why we chose to come to Montreal and then, you know, having the Fringe Festival be a week long and being able to meet everybody instead of, you know, taking your own show and, and bringing it out to another area and not getting to know people as, as, as much as you could when everybody else is doing the same thing. You know, we're encouraging each other to go to each other's shows and getting to know each other, and that's kind of why our ultimate goal is to not only express our work but to learn about other people's work to better inform ourselves, so... Well, just that um, I remember at the end of that trip, uh, Mariah came back and was like, it, it's, she, you know, it is a foreign country, um, but she felt as if she had gone, um, she, she was shocked that, you know, within just five hours drive from Boston, there was this whole world of dance up here um, that we just had no idea about and no connection with. And so the desire to... Um, the desire to like increase our relationship with Montreal, to like uh, communicate with you guys what we're doing, and have um, some of your influence come and um, talk to us uh, in Boston, uh, really grew from there. For myself, uh, like you said, Alison Chavez, this is my first time in the Fringe. I've never performed in the Fringe. I've never presented in the Fringe, and. Uh, one thing that was really attractive for me was in the past I've always presented my work in the context of uh, multi choreographer shows where which has been great because they take care of all the production side and I just get to show up with my work and say here you go uh, but it was just really fun to finally have complete creative control of the whole show it's all my baby it's my one hour baby that I could do anything I want with and to have that learning experience of self-producing which I'd had zero experience with and uh, it's been a huge learning experience and it's nice to do that in the context of the fringe where there's still that little bit of support there where the fringe really does kind of guide and help you through and answer questions so I'm not completely left out on my own. 
I'm, uh, I, you know, uh, I get bored so easily. Uh, the entire year we're inundated with pop culture and um, um, we're fed uh, different things that they say should inspire us. And um, so for, for me, Fringe is finally, uh, I, I, get, I get the chance to see things that actually inspire me, things that actually inspire these artists uh, to come out and take a chance. Imagine that in life, taking a chance. Um, so so the, this festival and festivals like this, uh, for me, is, as, especially as a tap dancer, people expect happy-go-lucky with tap dance. I'm not a happy-go-lucky guy. I wake up in the morning generally miserable. Tap dance could be painful. Um, and so uh, it, this gives me an opportunity to, to do something different out of the box. Uh, yeah. I'd like to go back to what Heather was just saying about putting on your own show, producing your own uh, experience, basically. This is something that is interesting, I find, with The Fringe, from my own personal experience, where you do have a lot of work to do on your own to, to produce your show, but you also have a lot of help from the festival. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to hear what your experiences with this has been for people who've either produced your shows before or it's the first time that you're producing your own show. What this, um, the structure around the fringe has allowed you to do, what, what it's helped you with doing? I mean, if you just think about the cost of self-producing in any other context, you would have to rent the theater, pay technicians, pay for advertising, um, on top of hopefully paying the artists. Um, it, what we get done in the fringe for the amount it costs for the application fee is quite impressive. You get six shows. You get support from the festival with your advertising. You get great things like the beer tent where if it's a nice day, there's lots of people hanging around thirsty not just for beer but also for culture and you get to advertise directly to those people um, so it's a really great context to try to sell your shows it's a lot harder to walk up to somebody random on the street and hand them a flyer and say come see my weird dance performance um, here there's people who are like "Ooh, cool okay it's great it's definitely I mean on the other side it's very rock and roll you get three hours tech time uh, you don't get to be in your th theater except for 45 minutes before the show You kind of have to have your act together, whereas maybe if you were renting a theater for the weekend to do your own performance, you'd have the space and you'd be able to warm up or stretch or even take your makeup off after the show. But it's kind of part of the charm is the can we do this? Can we make it happen? Can we just go out there and kill it? You know, it really makes you strip down what performance is and really understand how to get to the essentials of your work. So I think it's a really great opportunity that probably a lot of the big dance companies in Montreal could afford to do once in their lives to understand how much art people make on such a shoestring budget in this city and that the whole idea of a giant company structure where you just get to sit around and make your art and never worry about the production part of it those days are kind of over for most people in our generation so I think it's, it's a great experience to kind of learn how to sell yourself this is Jen um, I think on the note of why Fringe 2 is one of the reasons why we wanted to do um, put Iridea into the fringe was that we didn't really want to wait around to be accepted for this festival or for that festival. We were like, all right, let's just apply if we get in, and it's just like a sure like opportunity that we can perform at least six times. We're also doing Ottawa Fringe, so we get to perform 12 times, which is amazing because like we've been working on this show for so long that sometimes even like three performances you know you get to the third one and you're like ah so getting a lot of uh performances is just amazing and um also yeah just like in terms of the concept of what we're trying to do with air day we felt like yeah fringe audiences would really love it and it would be a great platform to get it like outside of um just the typical dance dance community but i will have to say one of the things about self-producing i love producing myself and i've been doing it since I've graduated and when I started with Allison with Inertia Productions. One of the things I'd have to say though, I, at this point in my career, I wish I didn't have to self-produce because it really is a lot of work and sometimes I just want to like be the choreographer or the performer and not have to think about all those things because at some point it really does take up a lot of your mind space. Like, you know, the first day we open on our show, I was performing and I'm trying to think about the lighting and I'm like, oh, I hope Charlotte gets this blackout and I'm, you know, I'm not able to be as present. So, you know, you get, you really, you know, get the pros and cons, but it definitely will stretch 
the artist to like develop so many more skills and, and really become like an entrepreneur because that's really what Fringe is about. It's a business. It really is. Pascal here. Um, I saw someone the other day that said um, it's kind of like I have a PR career as opposed to an artist career and I've never felt like that's more true. As I've, It's been a learning experience and a jumpstart learning experience to self-produce your own show and not only just a dance show, this is the first time I'm putting on a film um, for anyone and because our venue doesn't have a screen or anything, we went and built it uh, last minute so I've built a film screen now and we, we, it's, you're learning right here, right now and if you're not learning, it's not getting done and so it's just been a jump in and to hope you can swim kind of experience and it's been really mind opening and you, it's kind of like a kick in the butt for reality and what it's like to be out there and make your own show because if it wasn't for the fringe then like Ellen was saying you do everything it would cost a lot more and it would take many many more people to put on one show yeah this is Hans here and uh, just on that same point the opportunity to have like you know five or six shows in a row uh, is just um, it's very different from what we usually do you know when we're, put it, when we're producing a show we usually have you know the theater for a weekend or something and um, just being able to perform that many times in a row, you can really see the change in the dance and in the in the um, in the pieces as the company, you know, learns what it means to perform that piece in that space. Um, it, it really does develop over time. It's one of the great things about live performances. I think you can just experience that development, and you have to too because uh, you only get three hours for tech. So. <laughs> You have to work out the bugs as you go. Yeah. I want to chime in as being a company member and going off of the rock and roll style of, you know, going in, getting your stuff, you know, stuff together, performing and then leaving. I actually enjoy that better than having to sit in the space and get in your head in, in a negative way or whatever, you know, letting your day affect you. I truly like getting in, doing what you love to do and like just kind of like I guess like breaking down just like why you're doing it and not have to get into getting in the theater early and you know all the stuff that could cloud your head um and I so far you know this is only day four wow I don't know three for us and I can I think yeah (laughs) but I think I can speak from the rest of the company um I've actually really enjoyed this experience so far just you know getting there doing what you love and leaving Or talking to people and then leaving. (laughs) And, you know, not to drag this out, but you know what? um, When we first saw that, you know, you only get into the theater, you know, half an hour before the show. We were like, whoa, how how are we going to do that? But now it's like, we can't even get in until then. We're going to go see some other shows. You know, we're going to we're going to get out and see the city. Uh, It's it's really nice to have that um, uh, abruptness. Uh, This is Heather. Um, I think for myself, my answer to JT's JD's question, um, uh, is really the biggest support that's helped me from the fringe has been timelines and feedback even as I said I'm very very new at uh, self-producing and although I know in my head all the things you're supposed to do just knowing even just by when they need to be done and realizing oh my gosh like how much how far in advance I need to be looking at things and thinking about things and contacting media and you know I wrote my first press release for this show I've read a million of them but this is my first time writing a press release and just having uh, Stephanie and Sophie and all these people working for the fringe that I could send my stuff to and say hey is this eye catching is this good is this uh, you know strong enough and having them say give me feedback was just really helpful c'est Chloe um Pour Elise et moi, comme on vient de sortir de l'Université Concordia, on vient de graduer, le Festival Fringe, ça a été vraiment une belle opportunité pour nous de juste décider que c'est parti, on, on met nos œuvres qu'on a travaillées dessus pendant tellement longtemps, on les met là, puis on, on voit ce qui se passe, puis ça a été une super belle expérience de, 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 d'apprendre comment faire justement... Euh, euh, la promo et tout. Puis le Fringe met à notre disposition des workshops. Puis on les a tout fait. Ça nous a tellement aidé justement d'avoir un, d'être épaulé comme ça par des artistes. Puis euh, 
c'est drôle parce que moi, j'ai découvert le Fringe vraiment en tant que spectatrice. Il y a six ans, j'étais, j'ai passé à côté du parc Fringe et j'ai décidé de rentrer voir c'était quoi. Et justement, je me suis fait aborder par des, euh, des artistes. Puis j'ai juste décidé d'aller voir leur spectacle. Je me souviens, je m'étais acheté une, une petite passe pour trois, bi- trois spectacles. Puis j'avais adoré l'expérience. Puis j'avais trouvé que toutes les, les propositions étaient intéressantes, même si pas toutes développées au même point. Puis euh, c'est ça. Après, j'ai été interprète au Fringe. Puis maintenant, chorégraphe, c'était juste la suite logique des choses. As Jen was uh, talking about earlier, I think it was 2008 that we had our, our first experience with the Fringe. Mm-hmm. With uh, it was 2007, 2007, seven or eight. Anyway, yeah, eight. Yeah, eight. and we presented a, a like a, a series of, of different choreographies as a show. And uh, right away, the next year, we 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 started putting together another show with the idea that we were doing it at the Fringe Festival and the knowledge of what it means to do a Fringe mm-hmm. show and all this this talking of PR and kind of and and that had. Uh, that turned into c- kind of creative it, it ended up um, changing our, our our creation because we kept in mind what it's like at the fringe i'm curious if that has uh, i mean in, in some of these uh, cases you're you're you've got work that you've already created that you're putting up on the fringe festival um, but in some cases uh, have have you felt influenced that, that that the context of presenting at the fringe has influenced what the work is This is Helen Smart speaking. And um, No Fun was a piece that I had created and performed originally in November in residence at the Piscine Théâtre, um, which is part of the UCAM Dance Department, um, which is an incredibly different space. It's much bigger. Um, it's much deeper. And the work is very much closer to a performance, contemporary performance piece, interdisciplinary work, and it's very visual. Um, and the lighting is a very important part of the show. And so it was interesting to have to adapt the lighting to what is possible now. Not what you want, not what it should look like. What can you do right now? Because we're running out of time. Um, especially with us, because we have two shows in one evening, we only had three hours to tech two different companies, right? And so there was a lot of compromises that had to get made, things that we were told would be there that weren't there. Um, I had to go home and get one of my park hands out of my storage room and plug it in to do the follow spot myself because there was no follow spot. We were told there was a follow spot, but there's not. But it's fine. It worked out. And it's kind of fun because it makes you just roll with it instead of being really precious about, no, my work is supposed to be like this. And, uh, oh, why? And I need, uh, can we move the curtains? And uh, No, you don't have time. There's so many companies in the venue. We all have to share. So you, you have to just kind of roll with it. For me, it really works with my work because it's a piece about kind of about you know, rock and roll and not Don't caring. Don't a fuck. And not, yeah, not giving a fuck. So it totally worked and we were happy with it. I don't know, Travis, was it stressful for you? You have some pretty cool lighting, so you did well in the time. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> um, Catherine, our lovely lighting designer, she, she said, um, you have so many lighting cues, uh, there are, there's no more available slots in the computer. Uh, I was kind of proud of that. Uh, the, as soon as, right, it's ridiculous, come on. <laughs> Try dancing. Uh, anyway, so um, <laughs> so um, when when I found out that w- that we had the opportunity to do the fringe, I was very excited. Um, I consider it to be my job as a dancer to present music to people that they would otherwise not be exposed to. And uh, so for the fringe, I thought, okay, Terence McKenna uh, is a psychedelic guru, and I've been listening to his lectures for a bit. Ve- d- say a decade now Uh, and it's changed my life and his voice as dry as it may be is music to my ears I consider him to be a a wonderful poet Um, and so I decided to tap dance to it it's truly a a ridiculous um, idea but um, I'm insanely fulfilled Mm -hmm. this is uh, Heather I actually had a very very similar experience to Helen where uh, you know as I mentioned earlier we have a lot of props in my piece there's a couch on wheels there's about 70 pillows I think close to 100 apples as well as other small props astroturf I don't know there's everything because of the fringe context where you can't get in the space before your three-hour tech and you don't get a dress even though the fringe got smiled down on me and I had the nicest tech ever who actually gave me a dress rehearsal the next day because things were so crazy Um, uh, we really had to have just having contingency plans for everything like we never got to do the piece with our couch until the the day of the tech in the tech 
and the wheels didn't work and we had to buy new wheels in the middle of the tech. We had to send out a dancer and have someone else stand in her place. And uh, yeah, just really it forces you to think on your feet and be ready for anything, which is a really exciting vibe to have. It's good to know that everybody has like these kinks in their tech. And you're like, <laughs> okay, okay, it's all good. That's the way it goes. <laughs> it's, it's really nice to know we weren't the only one. I ran out to Dessert and bought um, some foam core to build the screen because we got there and realized that there was no screen. And my whole piece is a film. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was a good little trek. It was great. One of the obstacles, um, ice obstacles, quote unquote, quite often that is being discussed in dance is how difficult it is to bring in new audiences, um, how it can often just be impermeable for audiences to who are not aware of dance, who are not dancers themselves, to get interested into dance. The Fringe is, is an interesting situation where it's a bunch of different types of shows, different types of genres of shows, all coming together. What's been your experience with trying to bring in new audiences into your shows? Because that community aspect is very important at the Fringe. How do you feel that the people have been reacting when you tell them, I'm doing the stand show, do you want to come see it? Well, I know... Uh, this is Heather again. Um, I know for myself, I... I'm a very shy person when it comes to, to selling myself and going up to a stranger and talking to them. And I've just been so pleasantly surprised with how excited people are, are to talk to you. And uh, it's slowly bringing me out of my shell for that because I've had, you know, been able to go, hey, hi, I have this show. What are you, what are, what are you doing? What are, are you burlesque? Awesome. You know, all this stuff. And it's fun for us too because, uh, you know, I'd love to see a burlesque show. But outside of the fringe context, I wouldn't necessarily know where and how to look for that so I think it's nice having so many artists who are just open and ready to see new stuff because that's what we're all here for and so I think we just have to keep reminding ourselves that yeah everyone else is excited too just like me so yeah it's been fun I'm like so the opposite this is Helen again I'm not shy at all to sell myself so I live for moments where there's groups of people just waiting to hear about how awesome I am and so uh, no qualms about we've handed out about I don't know, 1,500 flyers at this point, and I got a thousand more. I'll give you each three before we leave today. <laughs> and uh, no, it's a, it's a lot of fun. Actually, uh, we had a great show yesterday where about half of our audience was senior citizens, and uh, and I was really worried because my pe my piece is quite abrasive. Uh, I've been told by some people it's very difficult, especially in a fringe context where people are sometimes looking for entertainment and they basically walk into the uh, the theater and get slapped in the face for the first 20 minutes in a way and the seniors were in stitches they were laughing someone tried to pull down one of my dancers pants <laughs> um i was really it was the best audience i think we've ever had for the show uh, i was really excited to have that reaction have people that i was like oh you get it you know not that there's always something to get but they really got it and uh, I, i'm gonna make shows for seniors from now on that's my new I'm sure there's a grant I can get for that. So I'm, I'm going towards this. This is going to be my new thing. <laughs> Travis, I just want to follow up with that. Um, Helen, you are my hero. I am much like you. Uh, selling myself. What? Huh? Just come see me. Just, just come see me. Uh, but watching you work, work a crowd is inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> this is Nikki. Um, you know, coming from, you know, out of the country and really having no leg to stand on as far as having audience members. Um, we have found that doing some site-specific kind of dance happenings have been really interesting to do because we then will, I guess, on a whim, do some improv and then people that stop to watch us, we then bombard them with a flyer. So it's kind of worked for us to kind of catch, catch some eyes and people that we seem that we think are interested um, will come to the show. And we actually were speaking as a company, you know, being from Boston, this is not something that we do as, as a company and being a part of, you know, being a dancer in the company. Usually it's, you know, the artistic director who's doing all the legwork. But we then were thinking, why not do this the week before a show and kind of do like a, a happening where you do like bits of the, of the work in the you know on a sidewalk and then pass out flyers like right near your theater i mean it's kind of a no-brainer so that's something that we we've, we've definitely learned from this experience 
Yeah, so the other day, Hans here, uh, the other day we were over by the Contemporary Art Museum uh, in uh, Place, de, Place des Arts. <laughs> should I say how yeah, I say should. it? Place des Arts. <laughs> she said with a terrible Boston accent. So anyway, we were over there by the Contemporary Art Museum, and um, we, we did this just running improv for half an hour uh, to the people on the steps. Um, and a photographer came over and was photographing us. This little kid came and started dancing with us. Uh, it was just a wonderful experience, uh, quite, quite apart from uh, getting people interested in coming to see our show. It was, um, it, it's just lots of fun to uh, dance for the people outside in Montreal. It's, it's a good time. And we find that people are, are much more welcoming and taking a flyer, even if they're not going to use it. You know, being from Boston, people are kind of just give you a face and move on um <laughs> not to say that boston's too i don't know um but yeah <laughs> now nikki um uh i thought it was like a, a wonderfully sunny day today until you you flash that 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 rock on your on your oh. is, are you getting married is that i i am married you are married yes can, can i yes. see that can sure I, see that? <laughs> I i i'll have you know i just got engaged and uh, I think I need to take on uh, this is beautiful, by the way. Thank you. I, uh, perhaps a different line of profession, maybe get a side gig because uh, that's a beautiful and intimidating size. Um, oh. <laughs> My uh, husband is not in dance. <laughs> <laughs> but he appreciates it. <laughs> Just to continue off of what you were saying, and I guess my biggest theme has been all the stuff I keep learning in this experience and I actually one of the places I'm learning the most from is watching all of you guys and even like I, I came and saw your, your show Jen yesterday and even just watching and hearing what you said after the show and the quick way that you promote yourself you're like hey guys like talk about us spread the word all this stuff and seeing all the little things everyone does to promote their own show it's really been a cool for me to watch that and be like oh yeah I didn't think of that I didn't think of that okay cool like that's how I could continue another time, whether it's in the fringe or another context, like things I can take with me from this, this experience. Yeah, has anyone had the chance to see some other shows? And I guess, I guess, uh, yeah, we tell us about saw, them. So the first night we um, <laughs> were trying to go see, I think it was... Ir Iridea? Iridea, yeah. Uh, but we got there like five minutes late and so we couldn't get in. Uh, we're going to come see you. <laughs> uh, definitely. So we're like, well, what else can we see? There's a the whole program. There's tons of yeah. stuff. So we headed over to see um, uh, Talking Cock. <laughs> um, we missed that, too. And we ended up watching Terry Fi Ty Cherry Typhoon and her burlesque ninjas, which was hilarious and wonderful in so many ways. I did not realize until that night that I needed to see somebody in a rubber rabbit mask playing the accordion. That was just heartrending. <laughs> you haven't lived until you've seen that. And then we also saw Shirley Gnome, which she was really, really funny. I plan to see that also. It's, I'm a big fan of comedy, and I went to see Jess Solomon's, in my opinion, and it was absolutely hilarious. Very satisfying. And I've got many more shows to go see also. <laughs> um, I saw, we opened on Saturday, and I saw three shows that day before we opened. So I started with Iridea, which is fantastic. Everybody should see it. Um, really insane, I have to say, production level for a Fringe show. I was mm -hmm. like, oh my God. God, how did they do all that in a three-hour tech time? It's incredibly impressive. Um, really beautiful imagery. It's kind of like watching a comic book or a graphic novel come to life. Yes. It's really cool. And then I saw Ventre Mer, um, which is right next door at the conservatory, and uh, is straight-up contemporary dance, beautiful uh, lifts, people in the air, people being all snaky and flowy. Some water, some sand, some craziness at the end. Lots of fun. And I saw the Le Deuxième Sex, which had uh, some really great moments, really great solos, interesting work with uh, moving a bunch of clothing racks around. So a neat little choreography of object manipulation. Um, and I, we finish our run on the 19th, so I'm planning on spending my entire last weekend super fringing. But we have four more shows in the next four days, so I think I'm going to take a little break till then of other people's shows, sadly. Unless someone here has an awesome show I should see before Thursday. <laughs> you want to sell yourselves right now. We do. <laughs> that would be Quicksilver Dance, Tempest in a Teacup. <laughs> Frag slash Nigger, obviously. One of the things I really love about Fringe is because it's a festival of like comedy, music, theater, and it allows us, well, allows me to like be informed by so many other kinds of performing arts. And it, it's just wonderful as artists to be immersed in that so that you can take inspiration from so many different things. Love it. 
There also tends to be a lot of dialogue uh, at the fringe. There's the fringe buzz where you're encouraged to either submit your your uh, opinion online or on paper, and it's posted here at the tent. Uh, and and people are encouraged to talk about each other's shows and the things that they've seen, so that you can you can well, so that the audience can figure out what they want to go see. Um, but it's also a great place to start getting some review happening and just some general feedback. Uh, I don't know if it's too soon. Has anyone kind of had that reaction of their show already? that has informed uh, informed them about what's up? Yeah, uh, this is Heather again. Um, uh, yeah, actually, we were really lucky. We got two reviews um, right out, out the bat on our first, uh, our first night. And it was really great because I, in this show, I performed Jasmine solo. I was still performing in my own choreography. And so sometimes uh, when we're that involved, we get really lost in what's going on and what your show is. And it was really cool to have right out of the gate uh, two reactions that actually really confirmed how I feel about the show. Like having people that I don't even know, I've never met before, who really saw the show the way I wanted it presented and who really saw the two kinds of dream worlds and they saw the the anxiety and the um, uh, sort of nightmare aspect of uh, Jasmine's piece and the really emotional, dreamlike state, uh, getting lost in loss. Does that make sense? Getting lost in loss <laughs> of my choreography. That was really, really cool to have uh, people see things the way I see them. Um, from our 90-second performance on the first night, we had someone um, comment on wanting to see our show, which we were really excited about. So I yeah. forget what they said. Uh, they oh, sorry, said that was, this is Nikki, my fault. Yeah, Hans here. Yeah, that was great. You know, we, we went on for this... Uh, uh, international fringe for all this uh, 90 sec we had 90 seconds to uh, present our show and get people interested and uh, somebody wrote on Facebook uh, the next day um, yeah we saw this uh, 90 second thing Tempest in a Teacup and uh, I've never seen anything like it I'm really curious to see more so that was that was great I mean as dance artists we really <coughs> crave hearing what people think about our work so um, yeah I'm hoping to see more of those well, and what's interesting as, uh, this is Helen, as a Montreal dance artist, I mean, often when you go see a show in a regular season or in something like the FTA that we just had happen, um, you know, at least 50% of the audience are either dancers or choreographers or people with a master's degree in dance. And <laughs> people have been trained to see work a certain way, uh, which can be good or bad, right? And so the reactions you're getting sometimes from a fringe reviewer uh, who maybe has never seen a dance show before. Um, it could be really interesting because they might see something that you've never imagined. They might be terrified by your work. They might not get it at all. Or they might like have the most brilliant feedback uh, because you know otherwise we're just talking to ourselves in our community and repeating the same thing and patting each other on the back and saying, oh, you're so great. No, you're so great. No, what you do is so, it's so like post-post-contemporary <laughs> and really in line with the <laughs> performative practices and non-dance in France in the 1980s and I see where you're going. And it's like, it's nice to have sometimes like, <laughs> you know, old man in the fringe tent be like, oh, yeah. yeah, I saw your show and it's about like math and <laughs> the end of the universe. Okay, and you're good dancers. Thanks, bye. And you're like, wow, okay, like, I, cool, dude. Like, that's awesome. You saw something crazy, and, and it feeds me as an artist to get that feedback. So I think it's a great opportunity. And definitely for younger um, audiences, uh, sorry, not audiences, definitely for younger artists, um, doing the Fringe is one of the best ways to build your press kit. Um, because let's be honest, there's not that many newspapers that review emerging dance artists throughout the year and if you're trying to get started you need those quotes you need those reactions you need to show that you've been doing stuff and so i think for for a lot of people it's a great way to kind of launch their work and get some buzz about themselves outside of the fringe context even here's chloe so <clears throat> for elise and i we had we already had some uh, good comments via the fringe buzz and online and people come see us after the show but um i think one of the greatest uh, greatest review or comments we had it's when we did um we had the opportunity to do a, a, a special representation for kids and we we promoted um to families that we saw and um and there was a, a like the, I think the kids, I don't know if they liked it or not, but they 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 were into it and they were asking questions during the performance. And I I actually 
um, perform in Ellie's feet. And for um, a performer, it was really interesting to have this question. I was doing a movement. I heard, why is she mad? Is she mad? Why? And I was like, oh, I, am I mad? <laughs> like, I don't know. It, it, it made me see the movement in the story in and in the, in the other way. And um, afterward, we invited the kids to come um, join us on stage. And we asked them questions about the characters and the movement they remember and everything. And it was a really good, I don't know, it was a really good discussion between them and us. And uh, yeah, it was cool. So it's a different audience. <laughs> This is Jen. I just wanted to add a little bit to what Helen was saying. And for me and Ted, for creating um, Iridea, I think the most important thing for us is to really have the people who would ne not necessarily go into a dance show be enticed and then go in and watch it and take something out and like leave and be like oh wow you know and ask questions and feel really good about it I think you know for me and Ted it's really about that like we when we're, we've been creating this show we've really been thinking like how can we just expand our audience member you know sometimes when I go out to promote I'm like do you like sci-fi dance or rock music or any of the above you know just like having so many different elements where we can attract people like you know someone who's like 11 years old or someone who just like maybe is like a jock who might never like go to the performing arts leave and be like oh yeah that's cool and it, it's just so important so important for us if you added like bagels to that list everyone would come you just <laughs> need some bagels in your show it's like nice bagels too everyone wine. likes bagels <laughs> Um, Pascal here. Uh, we haven't gotten any feedback from the actual show yet, but because the show, um, our fringe for all, uh, involved a lot of tampons, because the, sh the s sneak it up your sleeve does have a lot of tampons, I've been recognized as the tampon girl uh, from the fringe for all event because I threw a bunch of them at people. And that's it's interesting to have a double bill where I have a dance film because you can't really promote a film without because it's images right so you can't really do a short little snippet from the film it's all site specific and so i've been we've been promoting the show using the tampon it's kind of using the whole shockness of tampons to get people to come see the film but it's interesting to have relate the tampon to uh my film it's been a very interesting experience to be the tampon girl that has a film in the front <laughs> i find that when i'm talking to people because i'm My primary career is I'm a scientist, actually, and I dance on the side. Um, and so a lot of the people that I interact with on a day-by-day -day basis have no connection to dance or even the art world whatsoever. Um, and when I tell them, yeah, I'm a dancer, and the main reaction I get is, I don't understand dance. Like, there's, there's this feeling, and I'm like, how can you not understand dance? You know, what's not to understand? But, um, you know, the, the primary idea, somebody who doesn't have experience with it, they... I, my experience is they tend to come into it and be like, and feel like they're missing something. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the great things about the fringe audience, I think, is that they're just so open. You know, they, they want to see anything and everything, and the crazier the better. And so, um, so I, th I think it's a, even if they have no experience with what we do, or anything like what we do, um, there, there's not this barrier there that I, that, uh, I encounter with a lot of the people that I run into. Mm -hmm. To, uh, okay, this is Heather again. Uh, to play off what you're saying, Hans, um, yeah, I've had a very similar experience where uh, actually my, my Joe job is I work at WestJet. I'm a WestJetter! And uh, similar thing, a lot of my friends, you know, they really wanted to come see me perform, but they were all, you know, worried, like, oh, it's contemporary dance, like, I'm not going to get it. And I know for myself, uh, one of my biggest goals with my work and uh, with work that we're presenting is to have people not worry about getting it and I think you know in work that I I've seen uh so far in the fringe and reactions that I've had I'm noticing that when people are making work just with a strong intention you know even if people don't know what you're trying to do the people are grabbing onto it and saying hey like I see you know like I've had a lot of people react to uh, my work and say hey I saw this whole story where like that girl is dead and they're in love with that person nah, 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 which is totally not the story I had To, to going into it but because I think I went into it full force they were able to grab onto that and have their own thing mm -hmm. and so that's really nice to see that people are, are getting into it like that yeah. even the, the West Jetters and the scientists and the <laughs> Joe Jobders 
One thing we haven't mentioned yet is the Fringe is much more than just the shows. It's There's this community aspect. There's a bunch of other activities surrounding the Fringe. Uh, we talked about one of them, which was So You Think That Was Dance last week with Karen Fennell. There's also the 13th Hour, which is, you know, a uh, mix showing short excerpts from works and dance parties pretty much every night. So how tired are you guys? <laughs> what, what's your experience been like? Uh, of this whole surrounding things uh, with the fringe I think it's funny because I don't know if dancers party all the time the same way that acts do um, because dancers have to get up and and <laughs> dance the next day yeah. so uh, <laughs> often people will be like are you guys going to the 13th hour like every night till 5am I'm like no <laughs> no, no I'm not <laughs> I have a kid I have to get up at 6am and I'm tired and sore Um, but we went to the International Fringe for All on Thursday night. Um, two of the musicians in my show are in a band called Dead Messenger. And so they played at, at the International Fringe for All. And some of my dancers actually participated in their performance. Uh, they did a big strip tease stage with the band. <laughs> and then uh, Greg Selinger, who is in um, the um, Breaking Boundaries with Travis, also did a solo Uh, with the band so that was a lot of fun and we hung out and just danced afterwards and it's a great way to meet all the other artists and get involved and we'll be at the 13th hour tonight so I said I had to you know make it out at least once past uh, past pumpkin time at least once during the festival so yeah we're gonna do a little presentation at the 13th hour tonight and I'll probably try to check out at least a couple more before the festival is done because it is it's a lot of fun it's great to just get out and meet the other artists it's funny fringing in your own city as opposed to being a touring company Because when it's your own city, you can just go home and go to bed mm -hmm. and live your life and see your friends. Whereas when you're touring, like, you know, I've done the Winnipeg Fringe, I've done the Toronto Fringe twice, I've done the Ottawa Fringe. And, like, when you're in those other cities, you have, to, you have to go out and be part of what's going on because otherwise you're not part of the festival. So it's a really different experience trying to, to fringe at home. And, uh, and I definitely would love to hear how the the people on tour from Boston are, are doing because I'm sure that you guys maybe have more time to be out and about since you're you don't have your regular scientist duties Hold, <laughs> holding <it> back <laughs> well we actually have not done the 13th hour yet <gasps> but we are absolutely we are doing it because we have a day off tomorrow we'll see you then. we will absolutely be there and we are ready guns blazing heck yeah <laughs> yeah strategic planning definitely has to come into place when balancing the activities and the performance mm -hmm. like my strategy so far has been go to the 13th hour the day I perform when I have a day off the next day so that's me this morning yeah. <laughs> I went to the 13th hour last night and I can take a nap after this <laughs> yeah Hans here we have a very detailed schedule uh, including all the things we want to see and all the things we want to go to and when we have to perform so uh, yeah that was part of it just going through and making sure try, trying to maximize what we can do and still be able to perform I'm sorry, what is this day off word that you used earlier? I'm not familiar with this term. <laughs> working, uh, working two jobs and doing an internship and having a show is uh, a lot of things. Oh, God. Lie. Yeah, no, I'm lucky. I got, I'm on vacation, officially, actually, yeah. from Westhead. <laughs> so, uh, like Helen just mentioned recently, uh, there are fringes all over this great country and in the States as well. Uh, is anybody else touring this year or is Montreal it for you guys yeah Iridea is come uh, is going to Ottawa that's where on Saturday we've got a crazy day we have a show at eight on Friday we got to leave at five we have a tech on Saturday from nine until 12 and then we have a show at like eight so that's going to be kind of an insane that's fringe right <laughs> All right, that's it. I have a bit of a solo career, and uh, the, um, the I guess the, the tap dance market is uh, very specific in terms of the different places that I go to. Uh, what's particularly um, uh, exciting about being being here at the Fringe is um, there's a lot of really interesting people, uh, not just you know stoner jazz heads, but uh, um, I heard rumor from, from our, our lighting designer, maybe I shouldn't talk about this, but uh, <clears throat> there is a person here, not, hopefully not at this table, but uh, there, there, there was a performer that uh, allegedly stabbed their lighting designer for missing a cue, like last year or the year before. 
<laughs> and she's here. She's here. No. She, she's working. That was me, but I have been cleared of the charges, so it's fine. <laughs> So, uh, ladies and gentlemen listening in Cyberland, um, come out and have a good time at these events, but, but, but be safe. You never know who you're talking to. You never know. You just, you just don't know. Uh, this has been really lovely. Thank you guys all for being here. Uh, we've been speaking with uh, Jen Doan, Pascal Jensen, Helen Simard, Travis Knight, Hans Rinderknecht. German for cowboy. Okay. <laughs> Can we call you Hans Cowboy? Oh my goodness. Some call me Hans Cowboy. <laughs> uh, Nikki Seo Pedro Welsh, Heather Lynn McDonald, Chloe Bourdage Roy, and uh, uh, we've been having a lovely afternoon here at the beer tent at the Fringe Festival for the 2014 edition. I would like to do just like 30 second show pitches. Okay, sure. Okay, this is Pascal Jansen. I have Frag slash Sneak It Up Your Sleeve. Frag is the first and only short film that's ever been in the Fringe. Uh, it's a short dance film shot in downtown Montreal. And then uh, we have a short contemporary performance regarding the taboos and awkwardness around the women's bodies featuring 2,000 tampons at uh, Montreal and Pop Theater on Sailor. Cool. This is Hasamard. I'm in the Insane Dance Double Feature, Breaking Boundaries, No Fun. This is a double feature bill showing two completely different choreographies. The evening starts off with a good dose of rock and roll, wailing guitars, bad attitudes, and just enough underpants to make sure it's a fringe show. Followed up by Breaking Boundaries, which is a trio of fantastic street dancers, tap dance, break dance, and portion. So the show is kind of like, which do you like best? We're going to battle it out. Maybe you'll like both, and you'll like neither. But it's only an hour, so who cares either way? Yeah. <laughs> Please come see our show. <laughs> yeah, this is Hans Connect with Quicksilver Dance, all the way from Boston. Our show is Tempest in a Teacup, uh, performed at Studio Multimedia. Uh, it's five short dance works um, covering a wide range of areas, from the cultural history of tea, uh, the cultural history of tea, all the way to uh, the evolution of culture, uh, the effect of teachers on students, uh, lots of different things in there. So I hope you can come. It's a really exciting and enjoyable show. And this is Heather Lynn McDonald from Garden of Knives. Uh, our show, it includes two choreographies, Jasmine Inn's choreography. The yeah. underrated said, you can watch me do a solo where I test energy, test the limits of the choreography. <laughs> And then Running for Home, which will definitely pull at your heartstrings. And please come. <laughs> Chloe, um, Deux Fois Passera is a double feature with uh, works from two Montreal choreographers, myself and Elise Landry. The show is for all ages and it features um, a large group of dancers. And uh, the costumes are colorful and amazing and you should totally come. <laughs> Hi, this is Jen. We're presenting Iridea. It's a sci-fi dance rock opera. It's about the story of a gifted sculpture who's rescued after the apocalypse, and she has to save her own life by going to find the man at the end of the world. And it's a story that's told through live rock and electronic music, dance. We've got a beautiful photo film that narrates everything, robot, electrifying jellyfish, and we're going to transfer into another world. So come see Iridea. Thank you guys all so much for being here and happy Fringe. Thank you. Thanks to you. And I just want to say, uh, wrap up the podcast with a, with a tune from uh, Pascal Jensen's video. Pascal, do you have anything to say about the, the sound we're going to play? I do. It was composed and created and magically done by Gaetan Lebeuf who was our teacher at Concordia University. I'm, I'm really glad to have him work with me. He's done amazing sound.
Dirty Feet is recorded every week at the Montreal Improv Theatre. Check them out at montrealimprov.com. Dirty Feet est produit et animé par Produced and hosted by Alison Burns J.D. Papillon et Stéphanie Moret-Robert. You can find out more about our show at nomoreradio.com Follow us on Twitter at Dirty Dirty Feet and find us on Facebook at Dirty Feet Podcast. Vous pouvez écouter tous nos épisodes sur notre site web ou vous pouvez vous abonner également sur iTunes à notre podcast. Listen to past episodes on the website or subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. While you're there, be sure to give us a rating and or leave a comment to help us spread the word. Tune in next week for a whole new show. <laughs>